Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, August 22nd, 2020 to order. The time is now 9.01 a.m. Uh, we are continuing to do these meetings uh, remotely because of the COVID-19 concerns and the general social distancing requirements that are in place. Um, we will be doing so until a time when we, the board, assess that it is safe to return to doing on-site meetings. And at this time, there is no tentative ETA for that. Uh, we normally also do the Pledge of Allegiance for these meetings. However, based on the, the telepresence venue, uh, we will not be doing that. Uh, we have received no public comments for this meeting. And uh, there are actually no constituents in attendance at this point of the meeting. So there is no public comment. Moving into the items for discussion, we do still have the emergency declaration in place that we made at the March Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, I continue to think we should have that in place and do nothing within the time being, seeing as there is still a, an active concern around COVID-19 and the general spread, spread of the virus. Okay, next item on the agenda is the PennDOT Winter Maintenance Contract. Uh, we get this to plow uh, Christmas Village Road which is uh, technically a state road, uh, but we do the plowing for that and receive a, a bit of money back from PennDOT. The contract dictates that the 2020-2021 years would be a $3,562.88 uh, payment to the township. 2021 to 2022 would be uh, $3,669.75. 2022 to 2023 would be $3,799, or $779, excuse me, and 85 cents. 2023 to 2024 would be $3,893.25, and 2024 to 2025 would be $4,010.05. Um, the actual PennDOT contract itself, pulling that up to see if there's a a date that we have to return that by other than just as soon as possible. I think there is. That's why I put it on the agenda this yeah. month. Having briefly read over this, it's pretty much, it's the exact same sort of thing that we have every other time this comes up. Um, and I did send it to Andy just, just okay. because. Okay. We don't need to do anything with it now, but I would say let's be prepared to potentially action on that for Thursday night. It's not exactly light reading. I believe there's like 19 or 20 pages of stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we can have that all completely read and and noted um, for Thursday night, it would be good to just get that done and not have to worry about it. Okay. Next, the treasurer's report, Irene. Um, you, we had discussed last month about changing the format yes. of the treasurer's report. Did you get a chance to look at that at all any further, or do we want to connect sometime this week before Thursday, if possible, and, and go through that for suggestions for Thursday night? Um, I guess I wanted to know what Sue's opinion was of that, whether or not she liked that uh, particular format, because um, she's the one who's actually looked at most of the uh, reports over time. I liked I liked the format that we worked on when we were doing Pivot. Mm -hmm pivot table and uh, I thought that was a little bit more easy on the eyes but you know it, it's whatever people want to continue to do again it, it's it's trying to find something so it's not redundant so if we're transferring the information from one system over to another system and then Sue's got to like basically translate it again into something else it's just figuring our way around that you know it's less work yeah, I, I personally like the pivot format, and mm -hmm. we can have something prepared for Thursday night that I could I could share out on the screen and everybody could see it. But uh, the the basic premise is it captures the the key bits of here's the person, here's what we paid them last month. Uh, we might be able to get it configured so that you can see the code of accounts for each one of those like sub things. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, how critical is it that we see like that on the 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 bit the bit of the reporting? Right. Um, so you know what we're talking about with the code of accounts, the the tax information number, like which which account it's assigned to. I mean, how important do you think that is for people in the public to know? I mean, anyone could come to the office and ask me a question. I have no problems, you know, if they want to fill out a right to know. But uh, 
I mean, me as a general lay person, I just want to know where the money go. Yeah. So essentially, Sue, just uh, for clarity, because you're, you're making a you're making a face. <laughs> I'm just um, like what? <laughs> so rather rather than having it say like uh, Kozlov Stout to miscellaneous and legal other services fifty dollars, it would be Kozlov Stout fifty dollars. Because a lot of the a lot of the codes of account, especially with things like the engineering, it's all kind of in one anyway. Um, and then it really only becomes a question of if we have certain other things that mostly for like a record keeping standpoint that the things yep. are being internally from an accounting standpoint put into the right accounts or being right. handled under the right accounts um, um there I, is i a, guess my yeah. only my only thought is um like does the public need does that need to be in the minutes because the public the public is, can request that yep. with the right to know Right. Yeah. Does that need to be in the minutes? That's well, that, like my thinking. That's, that's kind of the burning question that Irene and I have too. Is, is it actually needed or is it just kind of nice to have? Because I could probably mm -hmm. figure out a way to get it to work with the pivot well, table. And, and going back, I mean, looking through other old minutes, um, they actually recorded in the minutes the, um, deposit, the receipts and the bills. But then at one point, that's the, the receipts stopped and they only yeah. recorded the bills. I guess because they only make a motion to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, wanna, I, I mean, that's, that's up, it's up to you guys. Yeah. It's just the way you did it the last time um, on that Excel sheet, mm -hmm. that just needs to be tweaked because I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to get rid of lines and how to like okay. compress it more okay. to make it fit on all together. Okay. So that just needs to be tweaked. But, okay. Um, so, Let's let's ponder that between now and Thursday. But the the goal of this is to have the minimal amount of work for you, Sue. Still get the 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 key bits of information out to the public and allow us to change the the format of how we do this so that we could actually have a genuine treasury report. Whether it's Irene or Dan saying this was our starting balance, this was our ending balance, everything has reconciled so far, and attached is all the bills that we paid and all the all the income that we had. No, I don't have that. I don't have it with me, but I did go into several um, other municipalities' websites and check their minutes out. And there's quite a few of them. And, and I printed it out, but I just don't have it with me. It's at the office. Um, like most of them say treasurer's report. Some of them, I think one municipality, the treasurer actually read mm. the bills right. and the receipts. And then it was just shred in the minutes, it was just treasurer's report. Um, accepted and or read and accepted kind yeah. of thing and that's the, that's kind of where i i think we should be it's the same thing with like uh, the police report you don't put all the stuff out of the police report in there you you mentioned that we read the police report and then it's available should you right. want it. it's the same same premise for me with the financial reports that it's it's separate from the agenda that goes out on the table but it's available to you if you want to right. see the the nuts and bolts that uh, that went into it so I think at the meeting, like once we start having in-person meetings again, you can actually print out the report mm -hmm. and have it there for the people who attend the meeting, mm -hmm. like we've always done. Yeah. But maybe in the minutes, just put, you know, like a, a lot of other municipalities do, treasurer's report read and accepted, or, and then there's always, there's usually a motion to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely should continue doing the motion to pay the bills. I think that's, that's kind of yeah. a requirement. Yeah. Um, but for the time being between now and when we're back in the, the building, uh, I am putting them up on the, the Google Drive and on the Thursday night, I put that public link out and that's set up that anybody, anybody in the world can click it and, and right. look through those. Those are things that we've okayed for everybody to, to see without a right to know. Because so, I do know a lot of people that who attend meetings scrutinize that report. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good. Scrutiny is good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, so, and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. I agree, you know, we need to include deposits, we need to include balances, we need to include bills paid, and uh, you know, all monies received 100%. It, it, it's all about transparency because this is what we're doing. And, you know, I, I agree with Peter, I'd rather have like a shorter format for me to go through every single bill that was paid, every single deposit, et cetera, et cetera, would be so time consuming. It would take up 20, 30 minutes at least. Right. Um, right. With the hard data in front of you, of course, if someone has a question, we could certainly I could certainly answer it. Um, and I like I know I had talked with you about um, 
it would be nice if we cut back on paper when we have physical meetings, mm -hmm. you know, for us as supervisors to not have to print everything out. I think all of us can accommodate and have some type of a device with us so that you're not having to print it out for us, but certainly for the public. I agree having it available. And again, Peter, thank you for making it available to the public on uh, a link. I, you know, again, I think that's great. We're just working to make things more efficient and better. So. Yeah, so side, side note to that point, Irene, when we're back in the office, we can either each bring a laptop in or I can look about getting some cheap, yep. like older laptops or tablets. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to connect to the internet and let us view something over PDF. Yep. Uh, so I can look at either getting one for each of the, the board of supervisors. Sue already still has the, uh, the laptop and I'm sure Andy or Jim probably have something that they would yep. prefer bringing with them rather yep. than using something for us. But um, Jim, do you have we'll, a laptop? Yes. Okay, so we yeah. all have laptops. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're covered one way or the other. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's the route to go because honestly, the, the papers, it's it's kind of, it's useful well, at the I time of the meeting. To, but as I said to Irene the other day, there are some meetings where, you know, depending how much stuff I have to copy, mm -hmm. there are some meetings where I use almost a whole ream of paper yeah. for one meeting. Wow. So just as a, a quick spitball idea here, um, one of the things that we might, considered doing it might actually be cost effective in the long run is getting a, a, another small cheap printer that we could put out on the table and if somebody says i'd like something we have that prepped as a packet you just hit print and it prints the packet mm -hmm. out for that person and Perfect. we do it on demand rather than printing out 50 of them at a time mm -hmm. um so I'll, I'll make a note to look and see what i can get in terms of a, a cheap relatively portable printer um that would be good from like a maybe like a laser jet standpoint we don't need anything that does color we just need something that's going to be real efficient right. and be able to spit right. out copies real fast and how many people attended the meetings i'm just trying to think there was eight row eight about um, eight or nine in a row well, or there, maybe, there was between 20 and 40 gen generally yeah. between 15 and 20 sometimes a little bit more depending on what we were talking about yeah. but um yeah wow that could that could be a really nice time savings and maybe perhaps a cost savings to the township because we go through a lot of paper i'm mm -hmm. at the point now i don't print up anything everything's electronic sue has all the originals the originals are all filed where they need to be so i what again whatever i could do to save time and money i'm good with that yep and it, it's actually nice that all of you do do email and texting because that was a problem before um you know where i had to print out everything then and put it in the bins and you know we're this what we're saving a lot of paper by good. doing this good um mary so, and go green yep. yeah. <laughs> so uh I'll, I'll jump down a section um down to what would be some of my comments for the technology related stuff um and uh slightly out of order with the the website update uh we're looking to schedule some time with civic cms early next week we were trying to do it friday but they didn't have availability uh, we need a 30-minute meeting with them to go over some of the the items for the next stage of development because we've we've entered the 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 front of the line uh, where they're going to be working on our website actively. So we just need to touch base with them. I'm going to try to get something either maybe Monday or Tuesday afternoon or early evening. I'll keep you guys in the loop of what I, I see or hear from Civic, but I'm trying to get that coordinated with uh, their their rep that we were we were dealing with. I'm available both Monday and Tuesday evening. Okay, fantastic. I know Mondays are usually kind of rough for me, but if I can get it in before too late in the evening on Monday, we'll do it Monday. Otherwise, I'll try for Tuesday. Uh, Jim, how's your availability for Monday or Tuesday evening? Fine. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, no problem. Okay, the other update is the network attached storage device is together. It's functional. Um, there's some configuration that I have to do, and I still have to get the actual like hard drive bit of storage. So I'm going to be trying to hunt down a good deal on that for some some hard drives, but uh, that's there and functional and is uh, kind of the the first leg of us storing things digitally. Um, the other thing that I have to do is get a uh, suitable computer. Some doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that'll run reliably uh, to act as our domain controller, so that uh, every every computer in the office, whether it's Sue's, the computer Irene uses, and the third desktop that we have that we haven't been regularly using, the laptop all of them are signed in and managed under that central point so that if Sue changes the, her password on her desktop, it also changes on the laptop or any of the other desktops. Um, it also allows us to kind of knit everything together in a slightly more secure fashion from a networking standpoint so that when we do introduce the network attached storage, 
that it's just there and available for everybody all the time and we don't have any weirdness uh, or concerns around people hacking in uh in, in other weird unexpected ways so um, that's go ahead ask a question about the passwords we need sure. to change the passwords on the treasure yeah. computer and that's so if you let me you know, if we could do that, then following the civics uh, meeting, that would be great. Yep, absolutely. So the, the other nice thing about doing things on a domain mm -hmm. format is you can enforce password expiration. So we could have it so that the password changes every 45 days. Okay. So that would just be a routine thing. And we don't have to make it overly complicated. We're not the NSA. We're not a bank or anything like that. But no. um, we just have to make it so that there is some sort of thing that prevents a, a password from being set in stone from like 2013. <laughs> So. Yeah, I guess another quick question on that, and it's just about where the equipment is. We need to get stuff off the floor in that little niche next to the desk. If we could shove in those shelves uh, that are currently behind the chair, which we all bump into and knock things off of, get those out, move the shelves over, and uh, so physically, it's it's out of the way too. What I'd like to do is long term the the computers I'd like to either like Sue's. I'm not super worried about because that's kind of tucked in out of the way, but like the one for the the treasurer. Mm -hmm get that up on the desk so that it's not yeah. in, in the way of feet. Uh, and then things like the Comcast service equipment, the modem router, the, the server when we put it in, I'd actually like to put them over in the HVAC room, which would require a little bit of wiring. And that's something I can do. I can run new cables, but um, getting things out of the office and behind a locked door. So really, unless you need them, and let's be honest, on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not going to physically interact with the server. You don't ever touch the Comcast box. So there's no point of it being in the office. So that'll be something that we, we do too as a, an effort of neatening up that space and making it a little more work friendly. Yeah. On that same note, the Comcast switchover was successful. Uh, the next thing we have to do is we need to set up the auto pay. Okay. Um, yeah, because I just wrote a bill for Comcast. Yeah, we have to set yeah. up the, the, the automatic withdrawal. So that's something that I'll, I'll probably get connected with you this week on and the Comcast rep, okay. Irene, so that we can have them just take it out because it's a recurring fee. It's the exact same amount every single month, which is why we had asked Andy about that. And for as long as we motion that it's okay to do, which we already did, we're, we're okay to do it. Okay. Going back to the, the normal order of the agenda, uh, QuickBooks. Yep. Irene, do you have an update around the, the QuickBooks work that we have Rick Roll doing? Everything is in order, um, which is wonderful. And uh, we're moving forward. So um, I did have to give Rick a quick phone call, and we did have a question for him with respect to the RKL audit. But everything is, I think, where it should be. And the nice thing is we have Rick as a contact. So if we run into a jam or have a question, um, he is available. And most of the time he picks up the phone right away and can give us a real time answer. So he's just a wonderful contact and a wonderful person that we got involved. So okay. it's nice having another um, service available to us in, within the community. Absolutely. So uh, the next item on the agenda is actually the RK audit. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it's too noted that it has been completed, which is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Irene and Sue, for all the hard work that you put in on getting that right, because that was. That was not a cut and dry endeavor this year because of a number of things that we, we had noticed. Yeah. Um, Six hours with them on Thursday, uh, just back and forth with some information, but everything was there. Everything uh, was um, discoverable. So um, I learned a lot and we have our current files in slightly different order, a little bit more detailed going into next year. And if either one of you gentlemen take a look on the desk, I actually started a binder over how to basically. So there's a binder that's labeled audits. So there's, I'm, I'm just keeping track in real time, typing up instructions on how to, so that hopefully next year when we are audited, I could just pull all the information and by the time, hopefully they get to the office, here it is. And I'm not anticipating as many questions. So good. That's exactly what we want. The audit yeah. should be cut and dry. Here's a big binder of things. Yeah. Have fun. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, the, the RKL contract actually expires the end of this year. Um, this is probably going to be something, and I say probably because it definitely is going to be something that we would have to uh, advertise. 
Um, Sue has some information on that. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I didn't put that, on, on, I didn't put that on the agenda, did I? Uh, the RKL audit or the, yeah, the, yeah it's uh, number five. No, I mean the, R, the RKL contract. Well, we have, still have a little time. Yeah. Um, so Kyle, who was in yesterday or Thursday, was going to ask his higher up supervisor if they um, will notify us um, that, hey, our contract with Marion Township is expiring. Do you want to continue it? Or if we have to initiate that thing, that we, you know, we doing the contract, I should guess I should say. Yeah. Um, and Andy, I did ask Andy if it needs to be advertised. If we seek other um, quotes from other companies, auditing companies, if we need to re-advertise that, and he said no. Okay. We've already done that. We've already done the advertisement. Um, and everything we needed to do to say a CPA firm is going to um, audit our books. So now if we want to go with a different company, we just need to get quotes. Okay. We're so that was, that was actually going to be he like... Said, he's, I, I don't have the email with me, but um, he said something about you may want to ask for like a written proposal. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Every, everything should be in writing, in, yeah. in my opinion. But the, the real big questions uh, that we have to face is, do we want to continue with RKL? Do we want to seek a, a quotes from an outside firm, another CPA agency? Or do we actually want to switch back to using the elected auditors as the, the auditing? Okay. Um, the one thing that I will say about the elected auditors is there are some things that they do not do that the, the CPA firms will do. Um, there's some filing that they do that is a, a just to put it lightly, it's a huge pain. Um, so it's fantastic that we have somebody who really knows this in and out doing it. Um, the follow-up question, we may have to ask Andy about the legality of this and the whole advertising thing is if we switch to a kind of hybrid model of things that we had the auditors do the actual audit and hired a CPA firm to do the, the, the last leg of it, just that submitting, that it may be a lot more cost effective to do that that way, but we'd have to see what the, the interaction uh, would be and the requirements that we'd have to go that route. Because otherwise, the auditors basically do do one thing. They set they set a, a rate for pay at the beginning of the year, and that's it. I would prefer to stick with the CPA group just because of the amount of information. I'm not aware of, I think I know who one of the elected auditors is. I, I couldn't tell you who they are in general. Um, but uh, I would much prefer professional service going over our books and looking for the things that we need to be on par because again looking down the road i i know how meticulous i am mm. but i want to make sure that this is something that's continued if we're not the exact people in the office you know i i don't know i guess best practices kind of a thing yeah and and for what it's worth uh, this is yeah. the kind of thing nothing against elected officials because we right. we ourselves are elected officials sitting here right. Right. um but it, it's good to have somebody very purpose-driven very specialized in doing something yeah. like that because then just simple oversights don't happen and for something as big as an audit you don't yes. you don't want simple oversights yes i absolutely agree okay. um i will start to reach out to some local agencies and see uh get some written proposals and forward that and this way we could review that as well well just so. as a, a quick suggestion does rick have any suggestions because he, uh, yeah. he can't so he can't he can't do our audit I know yeah. uh, he doesn't do that anyway. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm gonna. That's well. I, I again, I know a group that I've worked with before. I'm gonna ask them for a written proposal. I confirm with them that they do in fact do municipal um, audits, and I'm gonna ask Rick. Yeah. Yeah, and say because we have somebody that we know and trust. If he says, yeah, this this person does a, yeah. a really good job, or this group of people, or whatever, yeah. uh, get the written proposal from them might save some some time hunting people right. down. The nice thing is actually. Even our, when we were looking for someone to help us out, RKL gave me a handful of people to contact, which was nice. So again, you know, I'm looking forward to asking Rick saying, hey, who do you recommend getting the written proposal and we could go from there. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Next thing is also audit related is the pension plan audit. It's almost completed. Uh, Sue, thank you for your diligence on that. I know that also has not been an easy thing because, <laughs> oh of, gosh, because, I, of, because of the juggling that we did with the pension plan there for over the course of about a year and a half. Every time I think to myself that it's over, then 
he calls again. So <laughs> I'm not going to think that thought yep. anymore. Yep. <laughs> he called yesterday morning again. <laughs> yeah, for... You mean Sue? It was like a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thankfully, we won't have to do this again for another three years, and hopefully the next one will be a lot easier since uh, I don't think we're planning on switching the, the pension well, plan I, around I again. Well, I told him, soon. I said, hopefully as long as I'm there, the pension pan plan is never switched because this was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and Sue, <laughs> Sue uh, aside from everything else, I'm going to ask the favor that you don't leave anytime soon for various <laughs> reasons. I'm not planning on it. Good, no, good. No. Yeah, as, as an aside to that audit, I was wondering if everyone was could uh, participate. We need to take a picture and send this gentleman a Christmas <laughs> card. So I will I will make up the Christmas cards at my own expense. I have no problem <laughs> doing that. So um, whether we take individual pictures and and compile it, I, I'm I'm gonna do that. So okay. we feel like we have a good relationship with him yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. I did email him the other day. I responded to an email when I thought it was finished, and I said. And I said, thank you for being understanding and patient with all of this yes. chaos. You know, um, you were wonderful to work yeah. with kind of thing. Because um, yes. he's he, an audit, he's a state nice. auditor, you know. Yeah. yeah, very, very nice gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, we talked about the website, so I'm going to skip over that one unless anybody has ad additional questions around the website. Okay, next item on the agenda is the road projects for 2020. Uh, I still have not seen anything across my desk for additional quotes around the overlays for the bad spots. Uh, so at this point, either. what I'm what I'm thinking I'm going to do, and if everybody's in agreement with it, is I'll reach out to McCarthy Engineering with the the specs that Frank had given uh, Reber and Zerby to produce that first quote and try to get that added in to the bid packet so that uh, essentially like January 1st of next year, we'd be able to put that packet out for bid, which would include, in addition to anything else like the, the oil and chip, any of the remedial work that has to be done prior to the oil and chip so as just one big package deal. I had a quick question for you. Um, someone in the community had mentioned to us about um, the cold patch. Can I bring that up now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess the guys don't tamp it down. And I guess that's best practice to tamp it down. They, they do, they just intentionally overfill because it settles. And that was something that Frank had them doing and possibly even Roadmasters before that was the assumption is if you, if you fill it and tamp it and it's level as it starts to settle and cure, it actually creates the start of another pothole. So oh. they'll, they'll actually mount it up a little intentionally but by the time winter rolls around, it should settle smooth with the road. Okay. The, the problem becomes it's not an exact science. So sometimes that works out particularly okay. well. And sometimes there is a little bit of a, a, a bump still present okay. um, that's that was what was explained to me by like frank and some of the road crew guys on on why because that was actually one of my first questions it's like why is that like why is that mounted up you know like that's because it settles as it mm -hmm. as it starts to sit so um yes they are tamping it but okay. they're they're overfilling it essentially they're putting okay. 10, 10 gallons worth of stuff in a five pound bucket okay. um so or i should say five gallon bucket not five pound bucket but um that's that's the reason. Um, I do, on that same note, need to connect with them and find out when we're getting the next batch of cold patch because we did authorize that, and I think it was just them getting the time. There were a couple of days there that we were going to try to do it, but it was blisteringly hot, like in the 90s, and it just wasn't happening. Um, so I'll I connect. Think, I think Butch told me that they still have someone that's a little bit on the track. Well, okay, I thought want to clarify that with him, I'll, but, I'll check with them because I know we had okayed because there's still plenty of spots that need it. Mm -hmm. um, we had okayed getting another couple of loads of cold patch, so I'll I'll connect with him. There was something else I wanted to ask him about too. Um, while we're on the the subject of of roads and things, um, I'll actually I had this written down for comments at the end, but I'll, I'll sneak it in now. Um, I spoke to Jim McCarthy about the 979 William Penn Boulevard property that was having complaints around the flooding. And uh, unfortunately, the, the pipe isn't obstructed. Like Butch went oh. out and looked at it. And uh, I'm going to have him check additionally, but both ends are clear, but you can't see straight through of it just by the nature of how the pipe is, is shaped. Um, so I'm going to have him check it with a, a stick or getting a hose or something like that. And Well, he and I had a little discussion about this yesterday. Okay. It is not, apparently it's not, 
but there's not much, there's a lot of sediment in the bottom. Okay. So that's not, so, he, did, he didn't tell I, me that. When I did ask him, I said, did you clean that pipe out? He said, no. <laughs> so, when I called him, when I called him, I asked if the pipe wasn't clogged. And he was like, no, it's not clogged. Well, like, you're, yeah, our definition of clogged and his de definition of clogged are not okay. the same. <laughs> okay. Um, either way, I, I asked him this morning because I actually talked to him this morning to take a, another look at it in a, a real detailed fashion because after talking to Jim McCarthy, if there's not any issues with the pipe, and I don't think the pipe is the, the, the be-all, end-all on that one anyway, if it becomes a situation where the, the farm across the way needs to have a swale put in to control drainage, that becomes an issue between the two property owners. It's not something that we can necessarily require. Uh, and I got to check with Andy about this because he suggested the same. Um, we could send them a letter saying, hey, you're, the way your field is draining is causing damage to your neighbor. You need to do X, Y, and Z. But there's really not a way to enforce that a whole, a whole lot. We'd be able to take them to like district, uh, district uh, judge, like the court, local court but we can't actually force them to do it. It would just be a, a, like a non-compliance fine. So the, one of the other things is that the farm across the way is looking to build a house. This could, it could be something that goes away on its own over time when they go to build the house. One of the requirements is proper drainage with the NPDS stuff. And it would be taken care of there. The problem in lies is that could be two years, five years, 10 years mm -hmm. down the line. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to try to get the, the wheels in motion in whatever way that we can as a municipality to get this fixed for that homeowner that keeps getting flooding in this basement. Um, the first thing and the guaranteed thing that we can do is to check that pipe and make sure that pipe's decent. Um, otherwise, it would just be trying to get the, the, the things in place to, to get that fixed long-term, hopefully. Um, one of the other things Jim McCarthy suggested was we might be able to get the farmer in contact with Dean Truckenmiller because there may be some aid that they would be able to provide on uh, correcting that issue. Um, it's apparently not unheard of. It's happened in the past. There's a, a similar situation that Jim McCarthy cited in Walmosdorf that uh, they were trying to get grant funding for it. And uh, they ran into a, an issue with the, the, just the, the way the road was. And uh, they had more traffic over that road than was permittable by the grant, like the stipulations of the grant. So they were, they were trying to figure out a, a way to, to handle that, but there may be some, some aid that we can connect them with. So it's not a completely just, Hey, you need to do this, figure it out sort of, sort of situation. Um, once I know some of the, the more finite details, I will be calling uh, the property owner who had originally lodged the complaint to let them know. Uh, so I'm going to try and get a hold of Andy at some point, either this weekend or early this, this upcoming week, I'm going to send him an email and see if he responds. Sometimes he does that during, during non, mm -hmm. non business hours. Um, so we'll go from there, but, uh, stuff is actively being figured out in the background or, or details being provided so that we're, we're not just idle on that. And we just got to reach out to the property owner and let them know that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the hidden driveway sign that we had, uh, approved has been installed. That was done Friday. Mm -hmm. so that's in place. Um, I did have to order two more signs from NSI, a Stouchburg road and Wintersville road sign, uh, as they were stolen. So we, we need to replace them again. Um, so can we get a sign theft of these signs is yep. punched stop, by law. Please stop stealing <laughs> our signs. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the main things on the road. The other thing that I was going to bring up at the end, but we'll talk about it now is the uh, gasoline in the gas tank that's next to the garage is very, very old and has, I think, actually gone bad based on what which was describing that some of the problems that we've been having with the mower and some of the other small equipment is because the gas has gone completely stale mm -hmm. so what i'm going to suggest is that we get like countryside or somebody to come out and remove the gas because it's still unfortunately like halfway full mm -hmm. and get rid of the tank like we don't have to have them do it but we can get rid of the tank and switch over to like three or four small like five gallon gas cans because well, the rate right. at, at which we use it is is not fast enough to have it in that tank for any extended period of time. There was conversation either last year or the year before about taking the gasoline out of that tank and then using that for diesel fuel. I mean, we could. Because in the winter time when the guys plow, there are times where the one diesel fuel tank that we have now 
is empty. You know, they're out so much that that's empty, and then they have to go to Turkey Hill or wherever and buy gas, use okay. their credit cards, you know, that kind of thing. Um, okay. So just keep that in mind. That had been discussed before. I do think that one of those tanks also um, needs some repair. Okay. Can we get a township credit card? We'd have that to check with Andy. That approved a couple of years ago, but it never happened. Yeah, let's, let's check with Andy. Right. One, go ahead. If, we, if we have the township credit card that takes care of the recurrent charge for Comcast. I think you can do Comcast from a bank account directly. Like you can do a, a direct. Right. Yeah. Um, or link it and uh, it would take care of some of those purchases like at MSI or at all these other places that the guys go out to. Of course, they have to bring us the receipt, and uh, you know we could easily track charges. If it's One, not used for proper purposes, then you know yeah. we have record of let's, it. Let's let's check with Andy because there are certain different things that you can yeah. do with charge cards. Like you can actually you can you can have a, a credit card that's prepaid to a mm -hmm. certain limit. Like we could have a, a prepaid credit card that has two hundred bucks on it, mm -hmm. and then every month we pay we essentially we pay the bill and we put the two hundred bucks back on it. Mm -hmm. um, might be a good fit for that without opening up the, in, the entire kingdom of the bank account mm -hmm. to, uh, to a credit card might help it, mitigate some of that. If we don't have gas tanks on the property or the diesel tank, et cetera, then does that affect our insurance also? I'm going to say probably. Yeah. Cause yeah. Uh, long term, I would love to get rid of the two buried or the one or two buried tanks. I can't remember. If, I think there's two, right? Sue, there's one I for gas, one for two. diesel. I, I would love to get two. rid of them because we actually have, an insurance policy specifically for those two underground tanks. We don't have those tanks. No, I, I think I think it's one like the one barrel is over the thing that you used to or you crank it out of. Yeah. You crank yeah. To get it out, and the other barrel is over the hole that it goes oh, in, okay. gets poured into. I think yeah. that's how it is. But it's I a mean, huge tank. Now, now that you say that, I think you're actually right because I remember filling out that insurance policy and that it. I think it only had the one. It had like one tank. But I think it's it. like a five thousand gallon, five thousand gallon tank. Yeah, it's and that's it's, for heating oil. Yeah, which we don't we don't need anymore. Right. No, but there's still some in it because yeah. the furnace yeah. gave out in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. So the the steps to that because this is actually something that we had talked about um, previous board of supervisors um, was getting it pumped out and then filled in like with a, whatever the sand mixture that you have mm -hmm. to do is, because it's going to be a lot cheaper to do that than it is to dig it out. And the other mm -hmm. thing that comes into play when you dig it out is you have to make sure that there was no leakage or anything like that. Once you start digging, you have to, you have to keep digging until you don't have any sign of that tank, whether it's uh, like petroleum residue or anything like that. And mm -hmm. that can become extremely labor intensive and extremely costly. Whereas unless there's some weird stipulation that I'm not aware of, you, you can drain it fill it and then it becomes a situation where if the property were ever sold it has to be disclosed mm -hmm. i don't think we're ever going to be selling that property you're not certainly not going to be doing it anytime soon and as long as we have the proper record keeping of where that tank was we're fine regardless um so that's that's something to consider because there is there is a line item insurance line item for mm -hmm. specifically that tank if we get rid of that it's not a huge amount of money but it's still money that essentially yeah. is just evaporating every year less of a liability less of something going wrong correct and not, it's not, not like we're mention. not close to a not, gas station absolutely yeah. so we have good yeah. proximity and it once we remove that stuff we could actually free that up for additional parking because that's spots that we can't we can't use so mm -hmm. just sitting there um okay so that's that's what i had around roads and and things we kind of went down uh, a tangent there but i think that was good um Speaking of roads, though, the next item on the agenda after the road project for 2020 is the road crew safety gear. Um, I started yeah. filling out those forms and I sent out uh, the mostly completed forms to everybody in email. I can, I can bump that thread again, uh, but I wasn't sure how to fill out a couple sections of that form specifically around some of the setting up a line of credit with uh, the 911. Rapid response. What, yeah, yeah, rapid response. Yeah. Um, where they were asking for, like, if we have any other, like, lines of credit open, what their limits are. And I'm like, I don't think we have any other lines of credit open. Because um, that was one of the things that they required, is if you're asking for a line of credit, what are your other lines of credit so that we know you're uh, not, a, not a risk? Um, so 
depending on that, and I wasn't sure how to answer some of the, the questions otherwise, what, what we're ultimately looking for isn't so much a line of credit so much as it is we pick stuff up and you send us a bill in the mail. Mm-hmm. Um, so what that translates it to exactly, I'm not sure, but that's that's where we're at with those those two things to be able to just authorize guys to go down and pick up a, a new jacket or a new vest or um, anything like that. Mm-hmm. And we can set that up based on the the one form that we can have people that are authorized directly to do it. Um, like you, me, and Jim could be authorized to, to make the approvals on that. Um, and then like, I think we can delegate something else to uh, John in terms of being able to fill out POs. We would, one of us would just have to sign it. Mm-hmm. So again, yes. having a credit card would, would be useful Yeah. in that instance. Yeah. So, so John was able to get you guys quotes on, on that information. Did he get you all the information about the sweatshirts, the helmets, et cetera? I, if he did, I didn't see it. Okay. So uh, I didn't see anything either. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make yeah. sure he does that. Okay. If we can circulate yeah. that before Thursday night. Okay. That's something I, I would like to move quickly on because I mean, okay. there's. It's needed. Yeah. I was going to say it's needed and there's no shortage of opportunities for things. Um, while we're discussing the, the general road safety crew and things like that, one of the, one of the thoughts we had had in prior months was we don't actually have a fire marshal. Like we could appoint a fire marshal who would coordinate the efforts of uh, any of the emergency response in the area, fire or otherwise. Um, I think it's a good synergy if we had whoever our EMC is, which is John right now, also be the fire marshal. So they're, they're coordinating the appropriate response of Marion or Wolmelsdorf or anybody else that would be responding to emergencies. Uh, so we don't have to take action on that right now, but just food for thought, that's something that I think we should do in the, in the near future. Can we ask Andy um, if he's aware of what has been done in other townships? And um, I'm assuming we'd have to pass an ordinance uh, to that effect. We'd also have to delineate the fire marshal's uh, responsibilities, Mm -hmm. I guess, with respect to that, as well as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want, it's not qualifications, but maybe education and background. Um, We don't want anyone... Right. Uh, requirements, yes. We don't want anyone to step into the position of fire marshal. Um, uh, I'm trying to think how to say this in a polite way. We want to make sure that the people that are doing the jobs are qualified to do their yeah, jobs. Yeah, we want to make sure that somebody yeah. who is going to be doing that job knows what they're doing and they don't make right. the situation worse. So down um, the road, if someone else wants to have that job, we need to make sure that it complies with Pennsylvania State Fire Academy training. They actually have the certifications they have to verify and provide us with a copy of the certifications etc cetera, etc cetera. i know there's degrees in in certain training we want the most qualified individual down the road again to to have that if someone else would like to apply for that position that would be fine but we want to make sure they have the requirements understanding as well as experience to do that because it's a big role Mm-hmm. It's a very big role. Yeah, not to not to lo- layer things on no. John, but again, I think there's a, a very good symmetry between whoever's doing the flood, like FEMA, floodplain mm-hmm. stuff, the emergency management coordination, fire marshal. They all mm-hmm. kind of sit at that central nexus of disaster. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they have awareness on all of those things is, to me, a very good thing because then you have a, a single point for anything catastrophic like that, you know, to go to, mm-hmm. in this case, John. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also affects to a limited extent day-to-day operations as well and it ensures that we have adequately trained individuals within our community responding to -to day-to-day interactions so um i guess can we at some point sooner than later organize a meeting between the supervisors and the fire departments i'd like to meet with the chief and there's there's lots of issues that i think have been kind of brushed off that um need to be addressed we, we need to figure out what's going on. It's been a discovery of everything lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're peeling things apart. Yes, yes. So let's, there's a number of things that we need to, we need to touch base with the, the fire company about. We need to make sure that they're, uh, they start supplying some of the things that they're supposed to per that, that Foreign Fire Act mm-hmm. grant that we give. Uh, or I should specifically say that we pass through, we get and we give to them. Um, certain maybe missed grant opportunities that, that they're not getting because of a, maybe a lack of computer. Uh, involvement and that's something that we can either work with them on getting a computer or if it's a situation where nobody there is willing or, or able to use a computer 
that we can maybe coordinate through like John as the EMC helping get things filled out. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a, there's a number of areas that I think are, are uh, easy wins for improvement in that, in that respect. Um, so we'll, I'll add that as a, an item that I need to take away from this one, trying to set up a, a meeting between us and key mm -hmm. representatives from the, the Marion Fire Company. Mm -hmm. um, be nice to, to, again, create another position to be able to delegate responsibilities and assure that, that we have a good, safe community. Speaking of that, we don't have any fire police in Marion Township presently, mm -hmm. apparently. Um, that's something that I, I don't know that we can really force anybody into doing, but it's something that I think we should try to get in place because they are, they are a, a important element of uh, emergency response on a, a lot of things, not even just fire. Um, not to mention if we had people that were, were willing to do that and were properly trained, they'd be able to, you know, help out with things like the car show and things rather than us having to, to ask for as much help from, from neighboring municipalities, which for the record is fantastic. I'm glad everybody in the neighboring municipalities is willing to offer the help that they are, but it's something that I, I think we should have a, a little bit of representation ourselves on as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having the website and I'm hoping that's, that's something we could say, hey, looking for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, next item on the agenda is the office window replacement. So we've actually gotten two quotes now. Uh, and uh, the one thing that we need to pay attention to is there's a little bit of a difference in what was quoted. Um, so I'm actually going to open up the PDF now. So the first one from Mike's is to replace two existing windows in the office, uh, install two by six framing, and the upper part of the window would be closed in, half inch OSB would be installed and covered with house wrap and vinyl siding, uh, installation would be R21, half inch drywall would be hung, taped and finished. Uh, there would be two 27 by 48 double hung double pane vinyl windows, low E argon gas, uh, exterior would be trimmed with white aluminum. The one for uh, Kissling, and I'm gonna have to let me actually open this up in, in Adobe because it is it is sideways and I'm having a hard time reading it sideways. <laughs> I thought I switched it. Didn't I switch uh, it? Uh, the first one is is normal format, but the other one is rotated 90 degrees. So I'm either gonna have to read it like this, uh, or if you give me just a second, I'm gonna open it up in in Adobe and, and flip it sideways. Um, like Jim's smile. <laughs> um, well, that did not work right. Did not work right at all. Okay, there we go. That that worked correctly. Okay, so for Kissling, uh, there is a fixed upper transom, which is going to be the same sort of format as a, a closed in on the top. I believe that's going to be a window, though, uh, rather than like physically closed in. Um, and uh, low E tempered glass vinyl windows, uh, they would be removing, either one would be removing the existing windows, modifying the openings, and installing the windows interior and exterior trim as well. Um, the one question that I had around this, actually, no, I take that back. I, after I read this again for a third time, I, I see this now. The one for Mike's is two windows, top and bottom. The one for uh, Kissling is one really tall window that would have operability on the lower portion and then the top top portion would be fixed. Oh, um, yeah. So um, worth noting the Kissling one is actually cheaper by, basically 500 bucks-ish. I think the main difference is that Kissling's windows are gonna be glass the whole way up where Mike's going to close the top. Yep. And Sue and I were discussing if we ever drop that ceiling, mm -hmm. 
that may become an issue because you'll have to box around the glass, a taller glass window. Oh, well, it's actually not uh, that hard with, with boxing yeah, and drop ceiling on that. Yeah, but... it's not that difficult. Yeah. It, it, you know, we didn't, we didn't issue any specifications on this. We let yeah. it up to the people yeah. that uh, bid it and they, they bid it completely differently. One's going to use glass the whole way up. The other's going to box it in and, and insulate it so that there's, I guess, less, less, glass and less heat coming in in the summertime because of glass um so i i don't know my personal opinion is it probably looked pretty good with glass the whole way up because that's what's there now yeah i agree i think it would preserve the the general look a, a right. bit and honestly we can probably get some decent shades or curtains for less than 500 bucks right. um so that's that's kind of where i was leaning after looking at both of these is we kind of re retain some of the original look of the building which as kind of an added bonus um we give sue the the better windows so that she doesn't have a, a small river running in when it's uh when it's <laughs> raining it doesn't have a draft in the winter um but uh we just we go that route and get decent curtains because quite honestly curtains or shades we probably should have something a little a little nicer on that anyway try to keep some of the, the light and heat out um jim do you have a third uh agency out to give us a quote well, we had Troy, but Troy never issued a, an estimate on it. Yeah, he his, came out and measured, but he never... His answer machine's full. <laughs> he came out and measured, but he never gave us a quote. And Creekview never responded at all. So, the, the thing that we have to consider is the we're, we're technically below the threshold of requiring the three written, the written bids. So we could conceivably move forward with two out of three. Um, any purchases or contracts below $11,300 effective January 1st of 2020 do not require a formal bidding or written telephonic quotes. So if we have a third bid, that's fantastic. Or I should say a third estimate, that's fantastic. But we're not really bound to having that third one. It was just good general practice. The only other thing I was thinking is, since these are completely different applications, um, if we want to go the whole way up with glass, should we offer Mike the opportunity to rebid this using the, the taller glass type window yes. uh, yeah. so, that, so that they're on even playing ground? We're not comparing apples and oranges. No, I think that's, yeah. that's a fantastic idea, Jim. Um, if you want to reach out to Mike and let let him know because he shouldn't have to come out and remeasure or anything like that. Because no, I can just I can just let him know that we've changed the well that we're considering doing glass the whole way up. Would uh, you would you like to give us an estimate uh, on that? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it we might be pleasantly surprised. It might come back an even lower price point there comparatively. Yeah. Um, Never know. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, no, that would be good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next item is election day. We we covered that very briefly um, the last time. Uh, election day is Tuesday, November third. Uh, the building will need to be opened for the poll workers to arrive at six a.m. Uh, I don't mind coming out and uh, disabling the alarm in the morning, and then I'll I'll come back in the evening and re-enable it as we've done in the past. Uh, we would need to give a, a key to the front door to somebody to, for them to get in and out. Um, which, again, we have done in the past without issues. Um, one of the things that uh, Sue had suggested was uh, we make it so that there's no township activity on Election Day, as there's been some, some issues with people arming the, the alarm system from, like, the garage or various other areas during the day, uh, and then having the alarm go off within short order. So uh, for the agenda for Thursday night, I think I'd, I'd love, I'm going to make a motion around having it that unless there's an emergency, there is no township activity on that day. We just don't have the guys go out and do road work or mowing or anything like that. They can just come back to it that Wednesday. Um, well, that would also save parking spaces because, you know, this is a presidential election. Mm -hmm. So it, it's usually mm -hmm. yeah, more, it's gonna be, it's usually gonna be more packed. people there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the judge of elections, uh, Rhea Schoner, has resigned. Uh, she was in that position for 40 years. Wow. So uh, just as a side note, thank you to her for, for her hard work over that incredibly long span of time. 
That's uh, why I put it on the agenda. Would you like me to send her a letter from the township just saying thank you for your years of service? Ab absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, so other than that, I don't think there's much more that we have to do with election day. Uh, did I don't I didn't hear from you, Sue. Did anybody come out for the the ADA? Yes, they were there. Um, I know it, with this pension thing, it's just been crazy. Um, they were somebody was there. Two gentlemen were there. They checked out um, all of the spaces that um, the poll workers or people coming in and going to use um, the bathrooms, um, the parking lot. Um, they took a lot of pictures and told me we would be getting a letter as to what they found or didn't find or uh, we had not received the letter yet. So I don't okay. know when we're going to get that letter, but um, okay. yeah, they were taking pictures of the handicapped parking space and everything. So I was a little nervous about that, but yeah, um, only, I mean, it is there. It doesn't say it's there. And as, as far as I understand, it's, it fits for the, the ADA requirements for a space. The only thing that might be a concern, and that's something we can, we can tackle is by the, the number of like maximum parking spaces in the lot, we may actually not have enough handicapped parking spaces. Like you have well, to have they a were percentage. They were actually taking pictures of um, like where the road crew parks over on the other side of the parking lot. And mm. you know, because we only have what, four or five parking spaces total. Um, but I don't know, they didn't say anything. They just said they were there to do the job. You know, when they left, they said, we'll be sending a letter, so. You try. I do know one thing is um, there used to be, um, so on the outside of the door, the entry door, there used to be a, um, when they painted the second grade classroom, playground, or whatever you want to call that, um, um, that contractor had put that board on the inside and then put concrete on the outside but the concrete started cracking, so that got um, shoveled away, basically. So it, there's not like a ramp. Um, so it's a little difficult to get in the door. I don't know if they okay. saw that. But, okay. Well, I mean, uh, that might be the perfect catalyst. We had talked about replacing that door anyway. That might be the, the perfect reason exactly. to do it, is we get a letter saying that that door is not, not sufficient, then yeah. okay, we get, we get some written quotes around replacing the door, and we go with it. Um, that was just one thing that I know that mm -hmm. you know, hasn't changed. Part, and what? Yeah, let's say for the most part, the the doorways, um, like to get into the area that they do the polling, mm -hmm. the hallway itself, the bathrooms, all of those are, are pretty pretty. They're not like the most current, like new things, but they are compliant with ADA at least right. from the, the last time that I read through it. I do know that one time I was in there voting, and a gentleman in a wheelchair came in. Um, and he could get through the doorways hmm. with it in his wheelchair. So yeah, if memory serves, I think it's thirty-six inches is the know. is the the size the side to side size requirements for for things for ADA specifically for wheelchairs. I'm not um, sure. Yeah, like I said, that's just what what comes to mind. But we'll we'll wait and see what the letter says. We might mm -hmm. be boiling the ocean on on trying to yeah. figure this out, and it might be something really minor, uh, yeah. like you need to have a, a pole on the door instead of a, a knob. Or something like that or having a, a poll additional for, for that sort of thing but we'll we'll see um so if we don't have anything additional for election day jim or irene we'll move on okay uh the next thing is the flooding uh at stouchburg road at the Jer jeremy troutman poultry operation driveway uh there was some regrading done and matting was installed uh, to provide drainage to the existing stream. Uh, McCarthy Engineering sent some pictures over. I put them up in the roads directory on the Google Drive. Um, this was a, a situation where there was a complaint around flooding on the road and uh, McCarthy Engineering looked at it. It is the responsibility of the property owner to take care of remediation, which it looks like they're, they're beginning to do. Um, I think they also have long-term plans to make the, the needed swale adjustments as was discussed with the engineer. And uh, they'll be doing that at some point in the near future. So we're, we're well on our way to having that taken care of. And we didn't have any, any pushback or, or fighting from, from the property owner regarding mm -hmm. that. Okay, next item on the agenda is the 904 Performance Recycling Grant for 2019. 
Uh, we have been notified by the DEP that our recycling grant has been approved. Uh, the total amount for that grant is $2,587. Um, worth noting that there was some back and forth on that because of the action, uh, the order, I should say, the order that DEP uh, gave us a warning on for the Act 537, uh, that if that were actively in play and they were trying to enforce that order, we would not be eligible for this grant. Uh, and there are some other grants DEP related that if you have an, an open order against you, you are not allowed to apply for grants and you're not allowed to receive the grants either. So that is something that we need to be cognizant of as we progress through really everything, Act 537, as well as some of the other things that may impact things that we don't really consider at face value. Next item on the agenda is the Western Berks Planning Commission meeting. Uh, that is scheduled for uh, September 17th at 7 p.m. at the Robazonia Borough Hall. Uh, I plan on being in attendance. It is a Thursday night. Uh, Irene or Jim, if you're also available on the 17th at 7 p.m., um, I would uh, suggest that you, you come along. It shouldn't be a terribly uh, edge of your seat thrill ride of a meeting, but it would be good to have this and have representation there so that we can discuss any questions that they have. Most of our, our changes are largely semantic. Uh, we did have to define within our zoning certain things around uh, the presence of public sewer, but not public water. Um, I, I don't foresee a whole lot of questions beyond that because it's largely just our inclusion into the existing joint planning document. Where's that meeting held? Uh, Robazonia Borough Hall. So uh, if, basically if you're going down 422 towards Reading, it's uh, kind of back behind where the, the firehouse is there. Okay. And uh, it, if we all go, library? we can carpool. Go ahead, Irene. Isn't it by the library? Yeah, it's, it's real close yeah. to the library. Yeah. Okay. I'll be there. Okay, excellent. Like I said, if we're all gonna be going, we can, we can even carpool potentially. Um, so we'll figure that out a little closer to time, but bare minimum, I plan on being there so that we have somebody present to, to represent it. Last item on the agenda is the Act 537. So uh, first and foremost, I had a conversation with Jim McCarthy. We're gonna be prepping a, a memo to the DEP around the changes that we wanna make, why we wanna make it, and why it's backed up by good legal precedents and uh, the actual act itself. So we're gonna get that over to them. I'm gonna be working with him, hopefully in the next coming weeks. Uh, past couple of weeks have been uh, really kind of a series of schedule conflicts. Jim was on vacation for a week there and then I had some, some stuff with work and it was just we couldn't get connected. So we'll work on getting that together and over to DEP first chance possible and I'll keep you guys CC'd on anything that we have in terms of email correspondence but there hasn't been a lot of movement on that since the last time we met. Um, the other thing is the and this, this, is, this is one that I, I will wear entirely uh, I need to finish that on lot management letter that we're going to send out to everybody. I have it about 98% done. I just need to, to neaten a couple of things and it just keeps, I keep putting it off. Um, so we'll get that finished and we'll get that sent out uh, through a bulk mail to anybody who's a property owner in the township. Um, worth noting, even though we have delayed and we're most of the way through, the way the ordinance is, is worded, there's not a strong penalty for people that don't do it in the first year. They just have to fall into the the next cycle of things so if we have people in zone one that didn't do it and i think the expectation is going to be slightly low on that they they are still actually within that grace period that they could do it in in the second year without any any adverse consequences so i'll, I'll try to find some time for that and like i said it's really just a couple of last little things that i want to tighten down so that it's it's very very easy for people to understand without having to read the full ordinance um and still get it fit onto one page, simply because I know, generally speaking, if you go to, to either the back side of a page or a second page, people don't tend to read it. <laughs> so Very true. trying to get that so that it's quick, clean, and concise, uh, and then we can get that blasted out to everybody. Um, future times for this sort of stuff, once we have the website and any sort of email mailing list, we can do it digitally, but at bare minimum for this one, we are gonna have a, a physical mailer that will have to go out. Okay. Anything on Act 537 from uh, anyone? Sue, Irene, Jim? No, thank you. Just regarding that um, on that letter, uh -huh. I personally would like to have every all of us get together, make up a spreadsheet as to how we're going to track payments, yep. non-payments, yep. before that letter goes out. 
um, um, do we have <laughs> do we have a, a list or a spreadsheet of all the all the, the addresses the property addresses in the township I use the tax the the tax um, we get a we get a disk from the county um, uh, I forget what it's called um, that lists all the properties who pay taxes I guess so is it's it the, all the properties is it the tax assessment stuff uh, it's I forget what it's called but it, it's from the county and that's what I use to do the trash okay thing would you be able it's to just that some, you know properties are owned by people who don't live at that property yeah. you know they rent so so we just have to make sure that that's okay matches if, if you can can you shoot me an email with that that file that you use for that and i'll try and get something well, I, so we get a disc every year i didn't put 2020 in okay because um, our trash contract was last year or the other year or whatever yeah. like we had that that when we went with Eagle, um, we had those problems in the beginning. So that's why I used that because some people were not getting trash. Some people were not getting charged. And, yeah. Um, um, well, bottom line is if, yeah. if you give me kind of a, a starting point on that, I'll start trying to get something figured out so that we have these are the properties. This is what zone they're in. This is when yeah. they need to pay by. This is who paid. And I'll try to get it into some sort of like almost a database format so that we can we can have it so that you've paid. Uh, you had your system inspected uh, September 2020. The next time is just going to be within four years of this date, like or with four years of the end of the year of this date. So I'll, well, we I'll also figure... need to, we, and then we also need to track who Gary has actually inspected yes. and who he has not inspected. Yeah. Um, and that whole billing issue. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that whole billing uh, issue. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So while we're while we're on that subject, do we want to talk about the stones? It's up to you. We can talk about the stones. So, as as you guys saw, I forwarded you screenshots of the text messages that I got from Gary around the so the Rod and Gun Club, the the perk test that they were doing. That he texted me, he was like, "Hey, boss, I'm going to take some stones," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> what what are you doing?" Um, and then as that kind of unraveled that he was just like, oh, well, they got other stones. They just took them out of the creek. And I'm like, no, never, ever, ever do that. No, don't do that. Um, so I think there's going to be some, some following up that we need to do. And I'm going to talk to Jim McCarthy in the course of some of the other stuff around like, are, are you aware of this? Is there anything that we should be doing to try to try to nix this? Because I know that's uh, from a, like a BCCD, probably DEP, uh, from a, a lot of other agencies' standpoints, that is extremely frowned upon, if not outright illegal, to, to take stones out of the uh, a public waterway. So that's that's the biggest elephant in the room. The other one is that we have that pile of cinders that uh, Gary just keeps helping himself to. And uh, I have told him, and as you guys saw in the text message, where it's like, this is this is not something that's to be used for that. That's That's roadway stuff. If somebody needs a perk test, they either need to be buying the stones themselves if they want to go that route, or they need to be paying you to show up with a couple of buckets of stones. And you would go to, to Randler's or Alt House or wherever else and pick up gravel to do it. That's, that's not on the, the township to, to do. That's, that's not something that's handled within that scope of things that people are paying you to do. So um, we're going to need to level set with Gary on that, but we're also going to need to follow back up with like Jim and Andy around some of the legality stuff of, okay, what do we do about this when it comes up? Um, Can we send him a formal letter to such? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with sending a formal he, letter. He needs to have a formal letter this way. We have record of it. Um, and uh, this way, there's no claim of I didn't know. Okay. So, so if I could, would you be willing to start the initial draft of that, I read? Sure. Fantastic. Sure. And then we'll we'll circulate it amongst ourselves and get that approved to go out at if it's by Thursday, Thursday. If not, we'll we'll do it and then get it ratified at the next meeting. Um, no problem. Have you again? His billing is somewhat of an issue as well. We need to help him. Yeah. Come up with a better format so that I'm not spending so much time pulling up reports. Yeah. Let me let me once again review the packet of stuff for Gary and then we'll we'll try leading that particular horse to water on using the different format like with the job number invoice number things like that so that we don't have situations where it's like this person sending a check for $500 but I've billed you for 700 
or on well, the, the counterpoint, somebody sent in a check for 500 and I yeah. only build for 200 so far. We yeah. need to know like this is for these two things or this is for this one thing. And yeah. Gary has turned in three things and we're, we're outstanding too. There's yeah. no check or balance right now. It's, it's all like, okay, what, what's actually going on with this? Yeah. Another thing I've noticed he'll send in bills, something will be have the homeowner's name and another time it'll be the homeowner's address. So there's not consistency in that respect as well. Um, and he'll double bill. He'll send us bills for things that we've already paid mm. and he'll say not paid. And I just pull up what I've already done. I've been putting a lot of detail in every single check that I've put out to him describing exactly what the check is for. Um, so you could click on the actual check on the computer and find out which exactly location it was for and what it was for. So this way we're not having to pull through his bills again. We just can pull it up on the computer. Yep. So if anyone needs to take a look. Yeah, that's, that's, that's ultimately what we want so that we can, yeah. we can peel back, not so much by the person that paid the check because that's potentially going to vary from property to property, but having that, that classing in for the proper address so that if we had to look back and say, this house on Main Street had these things done, whether it's zoning, sewer permits, you name it, we should be able to get that easily yeah. with a right to know request if it comes in. Okay, so if we don't have anything else on, on that or the, the Act 537, uh, we've officially finished the agenda items for the day. The next thing is the comments. Uh, I only have one additional comment that we have not touched on already, and that's the, the final attachment to Sue's uh, pamphlet that she sent over, which is the Berks County Convention. Uh, it's going to be held at the Ole Fire Company Fairgrounds on October 10th at 11 a.m. Um, I think, uh, and keep me honest here, Sue, we're, we're all members, so we, there's not a cost for that. For we the are, there is no cost, yeah. um, and this is for... Uh, I wasn't listening to what you just said. This is for um, the Berks County Convention. Yeah, but who? Um, it doesn't supervisors, really. Supervisors, any kind of official, township supervisors, elected auditors, and your tax collector. So okay. um, we just would need a motion Thursday night to from you guys to allow people to go to this. There is no cost. Um, uh, like if you would take your wife, there would be a cost for her. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't even know if you can do that. Oh, you can. Um, it said additional um, additional dinners are available. It's like eleven dollars or something like that. Oh well, see, they're doing it different this year. This used to always be held in the evening. Yeah. But because of COVID, they're holding it outside, and it's going to be on a Saturday morning. This mm -hmm. used to be like a Tuesday evening or something like that in the in the in a hall. A, a, you know, a big yeah. area. Yeah. Um, but they're doing it outside because of COVID. Um, and they used to actually serve the meals family style. So this year they are not serving family style. You get one chicken dinner. That's it. You can take it home or you can go somewhere and eat it there. But um, it's not family style. It's not all you can eat. Um, but we just need a motion from you guys saying who can go. Okay, can we set that one as, uh, as an agenda item for Thursday? I will. I must, okay. have, I must have printed out the wrong copy of the agenda. I thought it's I okay. That. It's okay. I noticed that oh, it I was I have that under me. I have that under me. That's why I was like, no, wait, what? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I apologize. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see that no, under that's yours. No, that's okay. That's fine. I just, I actually got this yesterday after I had um, started the meeting stuff, so, um, so yeah, we'll just need an agenda, uh, a motion um, allowing people to go. Um, and they need to know, I need to respond by October 1st. The other okay. thing is um, they want you to not just say, yeah, I'll go and not, then not show up because they must pay for the dinners whether you go or not. Mm -hmm. So they want an accurate account. Understandable. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any additional comments. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Um, it just was listed on there, Jim, if you don't mind taking over the Marion Township Community Association stuff. I've been trying to get hold of you the whole week. <laughs> we keep on missing each other. I've got some stuff. I can't hear you. Oh, Jim, you're, uh, you're on mute. 
Oh, I said I'll give you a call, Irene. Okay. So I've got some stuff in a folder for you in this way. Because Don Height uh, found me at the office one day, and he um, had some questions um, because of the agreement between Bethel and Tolpahawk, and I guess there's some funds available. So I said you were going to take over on, on that stuff, so he'd like to speak to you. Um, but I've got a whole bunch of materials. The other thing is, uh, if I could, uh, you could give me a call. I just wanted to have you look at some paperwork that's in the office also. Okay. Okay. I have one, one MTCA related side note, um, with everything with COVID, I'm sure they haven't been meeting if, and I know Kelly's on If Kelly, if you want to talk to me later about this, please feel free to give me a call. Um, if you guys want to start meeting over zoom, I'd be happy to help you coordinate that. Uh, we have the zoom subscription that we pay for, whether it's two meetings or 200 meetings. So if you guys would want to take the opportunity to start meeting telepresence to discuss any of the upcoming stuff for MTCA, we're trying to circle the wagons around doing the car show next year. Uh, just let me know. I'll, I'll make sure that that's a reality. Okay, Jim? No comments. Okay, Sue? Nothing additional, no. Okay, fantastic. Well, that concludes the Marion Township workshop meeting for August 22nd. I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 1017 a.m. Is there a second? Second. Second. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Thanks. day. Thank you. Have Stay a good safe. Good weekend. Yeah, Thank take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.